welcome. welcome. <laughs> Karen Spotlight, Gabby and myself. Hello, everybody. Welcome to everyone to the Mentor Monday. This is our favorite day of the week. And today, Gabriela Dottry and Platinum International and myself, Claudia Borges, we're going to be hosting, presenting, and asking you to be part of this too. So first of all, let's hear from Gabby so she can greet her team and <clears throat> greet everyone around the world, and then we can start. Go Good ahead, morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Um, it's a beautiful, sunny San Diego day. It's been raining like last week. It's crazy. And um, anyway, it's it was a nice weekend. I hope everyone had a great weekend. And gosh, what we're already at the 11th day of March. Gosh, this year's gone by so fast. <laughs> And we have convention almost a month away. Who's excited? Who's going to go? Put a little hand up. <laughs> yes, it's um convention coming up. It's going to be so much fun. If you can go, please, there's still time. There's still time to buy your ticket for convention and uh, your airline ticket. So just um, I hope to see you there. So, Claudia, what do we have today? Gabby, our topic to, for today, we chose uh, something very interesting, and it's the role of woman in the network marketing world. And we've done this topic. It's one of our favorites. Gabby and I can spend hours <laughs> talking about why network marketing is the most incredible uh, opportunity for a woman. And so I prepared a, a little presentation, just a short, short one because I want to give some stats. Then Gabby and I are going to have a conversation where I'm going to be asking her some questions. Uh, some of you may not know, but this uh, woman here is our top, top leader in, uh, in um, For Life Research, the company that we have chosen to partner with. And why is this is so important is because we are a growing, steady, uh, debt-free company. And uh, we want to bring this company out there more to the world. So we are very particular because we have a science like no, uh, no other. And um, we may not be the loudest in the town. We, you know, we don't, we don't come out as the shiny, bright star of network marketing, but man, we are solid. I love how solid we are. So we're not specifically going to talk just about for life. We're going to talk about network marketing and how Gabby and her husband have been able to build through the last 25 years a team that um, has signed up over 2 million people. And so uh, Gabby has been able to be uh, an incredible support to her husband who has been opening every country in the world. And she herself has traveled to so many countries. So we're going to touch on the woman's role and the woman's side in network marketing, marketing because it's March and it's Women's Day. Women's International Day Friday, so we call it Women's Month, actually. Okay, let's start. You'll have a chance to comment. There's our Facebook Live. And let me go to this presentation. So it's about three slides. Don't worry, it's not going to be long, but it's going to be interesting. Present. Okay. Okay, so... Why we chose the, the, the title or the beginning of this title, it was not just the role of woman, but we wanted every woman in the room and every woman on our Facebook Live to value herself. Because a lot of the times we do not value our own selves in our industry, and this is why other people do not value us. So that's why we chose that title. I want you to take that into your heart and keep it. And with that, let's talk a little bit about why women are good in network marketing. Network marketing is a people business. It is based on building strong customer relationships and women know the importance of a relationship. So they are great listeners. We have a, an ability to relate to other women's situations and this helps us understand what is the customer need at that specific time. And so, it doesn't mean that men are not good at that, but we are the ones that were created to talk. 
let's go back a little bit into the era of the cavemen. Men were hunters. They were supposed to, you know, sharpen their knife and go out and bring the food. And what did women do? Women stayed home and they stayed in the village. They were picking up the, the seed and the crops. They were gathering. And as they gathered the food uh, to intend it to the children, they talked. They talked about where the best um, stream of water was so that they could go get the safest water, where the best berries were. And at the same time, they just prepared. And so this is where the role of women as social beings start. Men, they had one thing to do. They needed to come back with food. That's what men were. That's why God built men stronger, faster, and uh, and better in 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 what they are meant to do, which is the leadership of the household. Uh, that does not mean that we were not good in what God intended us to do. We are there to support the community or the tribe in what is best given to us. So when we try and become equals, God did not intend us to be equal. We are there to support. Our, our husbands and our partners and with the gifts that we have been given. And so I always tell my son, it doesn't mean that I am weaker. Because <laughs> as you guys know, if you have, have a male boy, or I don't know with the husbands, but mainly with the male boys, <clears throat> they want to open something and they'll just find a way to do it the hard way, you know, with strength. And women, what we tend to do is use our brains because we don't have the strength they have. So we go to the kitchen and we grab maybe like a rubber glove or whatever you ladies grab. And then we open it without any problem, right? Or we heat up the cap. So we use more um, our brains. Does that make us weaker? Absolutely not. We just have to get more creative. Does that make us more intelligent? Absolutely not. They just are led by force and they have different hormones. They have testosterone. We have we have lower levels of uh, the male hormone that makes them the way they are. So the, just to start that, it, it, in going into network marketing is the same thing. We don't go into network marketing with brute force. And so for women, it's a great way to socialize. It's a great way to listen to others, to see how we can meet up at a halfway point and see where we can partner. And so it's a great industry for us. And this is the part I wanted to talk about, which is the statistics. Now, these are not only for women, but before Gabby, I'm going to ask Gabby some questions. And also you can please chat, chat, chat in that chat about this so we can read what you think. I want you to look at this, mainly in the U.S. I didn't want to take the African numbers because I would have taken forever. So let's just work with the U.S. numbers for today. These are from 2020, by the way. There are over 116 million people involved in network marketing worldwide. There are 36 million network marketing millionaires around the world. Approximately one in every 545 U.S. citizens receives income from network marketing. That one, I want to stop there for a second. I want you to read that one. One in 545 U.S. citizens receives income in network marketing. Network marketers who have been in the industry for over five years make an average of 100, 110,000 per year. And by the way, uh, where did I get? Oh, I deleted the, the source where I got this. Sorry, I can, I can give it to you at the end just for um, the purpose of being compliant. So this I gather from a couple of Google sites and, and so there may not be exact, but you know, that specific blog that I got it from had the resources. I deleted them without meaning to, so I'll just add them at the end <clears throat> or on the chat. Um, because it had it had it stopped on each one of them and I only chose one of it. So the most important marketing statistics, again, just a couple more. 14% of network marketers have been in the business for three to four years. People aged 35 to 44 make up the largest demographic of network marketers, comprising 30% of the market. Direct selling companies have generated, we know it's been over 4 billion now in retail sales. 79% of people believe that attending events makes them more engaged with their product or business. 
And last that I chose, network marketers age 18 to 23 represent 8% of the industry. I'm going to stop in one, which is the one that I was interested in, which is the network marketer in women, 68. I know Michael said 77. And again, it could be anywhere from 70 to 80, depending on who did the, the statistic. So let's just be, you know, 75%. This statistic is significant in the context of network marketing millionaires uh, statistics because it highlights the fact that women are increasingly becoming successful in the network marketing industry. It shows that women are not only capable of achieving success in this field, but that they are also actively pursuing it. This statistic is a testament to the fact that women are increasingly becoming empowered to take control of their financial future and are achieving success in the network marketing industry. <clears throat> So there's a lot on that paragraph alone. And I'll tell you that one of the reasons I was speaking to my sister, and it was also something I posted in, in, um, in Facebook, is the fact that a uh, woman 50 years ago, or even man, or let's even just say marriages were different. And so if you look at a marriage 50 years ago, the man was working, the woman was staying at home, and the divorce rates were very low. And nowadays, divorce rates are really high. So if the woman was doing the same thing that they did 50 or 60 years ago, she would be pretty much left in the street. <laughs> so she needs to protect herself because as divorces rise, women feel that they are unprotected because they have lost all that time, right? not lost that time, but invested the time in having the children, raising the children, having another child, raising the child. By the time she finishes with her third or fourth or fifth child, she has not had time to do her career, to finish her master, to get uh, um, ahead in her job employment. So this is why network marketing is so highly pursued nowadays if moms still want to be moms. Network marketing is a lucrative business opportunity that has seen, seen tremendous growth over the past few years with 82% of women making over 100,000 annually through network marketing and 36 million millionaires around the world. It's clear to see why so many people are drawn to this industry. 36 million millionaires with network marketing, that's incredible. Despite high first year attrition rates, and I had to look up the word attrition. I don't know if you guys know what attrition means, but it means people that, the, when the numbers come down, so when people leave. So this part I, I added because it is very important to recognize that a lot of people try it and they go. Try it and they don't like it. Try it and they quit. And so that's okay. Look at this, 50 to 80% leave on the first year. And even then, there are 116 million people involved in network marketing with approximately one in 545 of every U.S. citizen earning an income from it. So even though we lose 50 to 80 on the first year, so they try it, they don't like it. And this is why I want everyone to stay with that, which is if they say, no, it's okay. If they leave, it's okay. You need, But you need to find one. This one's a little long, but that is my, my last one, which is the overall um, summary. So overall sales within network marketing have grown significantly since 2013 and Asia Pacific accounts for 44% of total sales in the global market. Network marketers who have been in the, indus in the industry for more than five years can make an average of 110,000 while only 3% reach top tier compensation structures. So we know if we look at our own chart that less than 1% 1 of our company is a platinum or platinum elite. So this, this is just what it is. <laughs> the US, which makes up 20% of global market share generated over $3 billion in retail sales alone in one year. Customers also received nearly $25 billion worth of commissions via network marketing during 2019. In 2020, 33% operated part-time, 33% part-time, 14% had been working at their company between three to four years, 35 to 44-year-olds made up 30% of the demographic, 
79% believe that attending events increases their business, and 8% were 18 to 23-year-olds, and 1% was the annual growth rate globally. Oh, there they are. Thank you. I just realized that I do have where we gather these uh, statistics from. So why I wanted to start with, uh, with those stats is because it gives us, oh, escape. <laughs> okay, let me stop that share. Uh, it's, so it's so nice when your mouse doesn't wanna work. One second, please. Okay, so while I figure out how to escape this page and go back to my, okay, to my stop share, I'll let Gabby start talking while I figure out how to get this stop share here. Gabby, what do you think about those stats? Uh, I have a couple of questions I want to ask you, but I have a little technical issue here, so I'll give you the word. You know, for me, I don't know why is it maybe because I don't like math, but it's to me, it's like, yeah, the stats are interesting, but in real life, you know, what do, what do we want from our business? You know, um, it's interesting to see statistics and, you know, obviously we make up statistics, you know, numbers and, you know, um, just like in every, I guess every um, in business, every, every occupation, every, everything we do is a statistic. But like I said, you know, what do you want? What, how, where do you want your business to go? Um, what are you willing to do? What, how much time are you willing to put into your business every day? Because this business really, if you have a passion for it, you'll succeed in whatever means, whatever it means to succeed. What does it mean to succeed for you? And I have, um, I found this on, um, on the internet. It says 15 grow model goal coaching questions. And this is something I probably, there's a lot, it's 15 questions basically that you yourself have to answer. It's like a, like a workshop type thing. Um, just for time's sake, I probably will put it in the chat after the call, but um, let me know if I have time to read the 15 or or if I could. You can, you can start, you can start. Let's do one at a time and then we can ask people to talk and then I have some questions for you. So why don't we start with one or two and then we'll take it from there. Okay. All right. So question number one is where do you where do you most want to see change in your life? I think a lot of people can probably answer that question. Now, obviously, with, with every answer, there's going to be probably you're going to have to make some changes in your life. So where do you want where? Do you most want to see change in your life? I mean, I guess that could be almost everything in your life. <laughs> Whether it's um, be more consistent, uh, be more um, goal-oriented, you know. So, Claudia, where would you want to make the most changes in your life? <laughs> at, this, at this time, just because the last 11 years, I have dedicated so much time to building a, a good, strong foundation in family and time, time with Mateo. At this time of my life, the biggest change is financial. I, I, I put it on my prayer this morning to God. I said, God, multiply my team. Give me the woman that I can work with. Give me the people to build. And so at this time, it's very clear and it's career. Uh, but a couple of years ago, it was marriage because I had just gotten married. And a few years before that, it was Mateo because I wanted to make sure Mateo had a stable. So so it, it changes with, with time, right? But definitely right now, my team, and I'm very clear, it's not only finances because I have another business. I'm an interpreter and a translator. I don't want to grow in that one. I'm like, Lord, thank you for giving me that business. But I want to grow my network marketing team. So I think we have to be very clear to ask God in those prayers, uh, 
what it when some people are putting finances but finances in which way like through your job because you could get a raise you know if you're like god increase my finances and then god gives you a raise do you want more hours like they might ask you for more hours or you might get a second job right or an opportunity to study a second career so because we're talking about network marketing the question is what is your goal in this time of your life and in your network marketing lifestyle? Because network marketing is a lifestyle. So I, I would be asking people, what is your network marketing goal? Because it goes with time and it goes with finance and it goes with career and it goes with health, right? Uh, but to be more specific with those. with those, Right. Um, well, you know, everyone, um, let me see, does... One more person want to share where what where do you most want to see changes in your life? And I don't think many people really think about that until they're probably tired of their jobs. I don't I don't think teenagers think about that or or young adults, but you know, the older we get, the more we have that question, I guess. I opened the mics, uh, so I want to read some of the ones that are coming in. Marcus says self-esteem, because it's important to rise, uh, raise in woman the belief that I can succeed. And Susan says, thanks for the reminder in being more specific in those goals. Um, and, uh, and, and Susan also says, I see how men can have a lot of women in their teams. Very good. Very good. Let's go to the second question, Gabby. Okay. So when do you want to have achieved this by? So you have to give yourself a deadline. You can't just assume, oh, someday I want to have a big house and a car and money. You know, it's not a wish list. <laughs> you have to work for it. <laughs> I mean, it can be on your bucket list, which a bucket list usually is what it is. You know, it's about life goals. But you yeah, have to have a deadline. <laughs> tell that story, please. Share with us. I know the story, but I want you to share with the audience. When uh, Dave and you made the goal that you would reach to, you would reach the one hundred thousand dollar goal per month. Uh, how did you guys sit down and say, "Okay, we're going to reach the one hundred thousand dollar goal per month"? How how did how did that how did that happen? <clears throat> well, let me tell you something. Back back when Dave and I first started, and we signed that for life app. And went to corporate, <clears throat> excuse me, for the first time. To me, gosh, making that kind of money was outrageous. It was like, no way. No one can make that kind of money. You know, I don't even think doctors make that kind of money. <laughs> I mean, they make good money. Let me get, you know, they doctors, obviously, when you think of someone that has good money, it's doctors, lawyers, dentists, you know, people that went to school for a very long time and they, they got good at what they did. But, you know, there, I believe in the law of manifestation too. Uh, but you have to work for it. Okay. That means that you read, that you um, dissect your, you know, you just sit down and you do the homework, you know, whatever it is that you want to do. Okay. That's how people get good at what they do. Um, they, you know, things are not just going to land on your on your lap. Things you have to work for. It. You have to be gain the knowledge. Um, you have to. Do, you do have to have, like I said, a passion for it. And um, you know, I mean, it's it can be as easy as loving a lotion, you know, a skincare product, a protein bar. Um, you know, a product that we have, it can be as simple as that. It's like, oh my gosh, I love this product so much. I want to talk about it. So you go and you find all the information there is on your app. And that week, take the time to learn what the ingredients are and why they're better than any other energy drink. Why? Um, you just sit down and you write them down. And you review them every day and then you get good at it, you know? So, you know, it's that simple. <laughs> it's that simple. And then when people, you know, you say, oh my gosh, this energy drink has a good immune boost in it. And people are going to say, oh, I need immunity. Who doesn't need immunity? 
then you, you know, just give them a sample or you could even sell your sample too. <laughs> I mean, people are more up to taking something that uh, costs them, you know, I think, you know, it's uh, either their time or money. It's just, uh, that's why, that's why a lot of these, like Tony Robbins charges people, maybe if it's even a little bit, but people value what, you know, what they pay for. That's very good, Gabby. And I wanted to, um, to go back to, uh, to the fact that a lot of us forget to make that goal because we just want to survive and make sure that we have enough money to pay our bills. And so we make a budget and we make it according to the expenses that we have. So we're, we're, when Gabby says power of manifestation, what she's saying is, if you're saying, okay, I have to pay $1,000 for rent, $300 of groceries, $300 for the car, and then you say, okay, my expenses are $5,000 a month or in your currency. And if you focus that you need to make $5,000, then your, your reptilian brain, your conscious brain will make what you need, but it will not go above that, that exterior of what is safe. And so it will help you work and it will help you succeed in exactly that. So I remember when Gabby told me that story and Dave says it all the time, uh, that they made that goal, that they would make $100,000 per month. So not per year, which is what a lot of us say, wow, if I could make $100,000 per year, that's about $8,000 a month. And so making $8,000 a month, and if somebody, Susan or or Mercy or or Michael can help me transfer that into, into Kenyan shillings, that's a lot of money. And in other countries that are not America, you can live very, very wealthy with that amount of money. But Gabby and Dave, they said, we want to reach $100,000 a month. Is that, that is the, the, the part where I want you to focus on, Gabby. Oh, I just wanted to say, we sat down and we actually wrote our goals on a piece of paper. And... Um, you know, you have to say, okay, if I want to make this kind of money, let's say I want to go diamond, how many people do I need to talk to? Then how many people I need to sign up? And then out of those people, how many, how many people, um, after seeing what we have left after talking, maybe let's say to a hundred people, maybe only at those, of those hundred people, only 10 people take this business seriously. And out of those 10 people, which ones are your leaders? You have to identify the leaders, okay? And I mean, we've worked with so many people in over 25 years and, you know, some go, come and go, but you need to identify those people, okay? And you need to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with them too and say, you know, Claudia, I see you are so gifted at this or at that. You're really good in communicating and delegating. And those are great qualities. I would love for you to work with me, you know, and let's build together. Because Claudia might be thinking without telling me that she is struggling in some way and she can't do this. But if I tell her she has these potentials, she might change her mind because she may feel gosh, you know, I could be, you know, in five years, I could retire from my job and do this full time. Anyway, Claudia, I'm just so glad that you're here. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the next part I'm going to do, I want to give the word to Ingrid, and I'm going to show you a short YouTube video. Uh, I'm going to actually show you two short videos. It's there less than three minutes. But Ingrid, I think you wanted to talk before I go into that segment. Ingrid Belen. Ingrid? No? Uh, you can take your mic off, by the way. She raised her hand, but now she brought it down. Okay. No, it, it, it was a mistake, but yeah, I am listening to what uh, you guys have been saying. Uh, oh, Tony. It's, it's really nice when, you know, your upline say, hey, you know, I believe in you. You can do it. Let's do it together. Let's work shoulder with shoulder. 
and, and that's perfect. I love this. And if we have that support from the upline, then um, uh, we can like little babies, you know, at the beginning, and then after they can uh, get the graduation as uh, teenagers <laughs> and do the job by themselves. But yeah, this is this is. I really appreciate this, Claudia. And, and yeah, very yeah. good. But Thank you, Ingrid. Well, she knows I do believe in her. So I'm going to go use the phone because I'm having issues with my mouse. So let me just share the questions that I had prepared. And then I'm going to show you a short video, one of Gabby and one of another woman, just because it helps me with the questions. I want everybody here, woman and man, especially woman, why do you think it's easier to be successful for a woman in the network marketing industry than in other careers? I want you to write it on the chat. If you want to raise your hand, I also want you to be bold and say, I believe that people, that women can be more successful in network marketing than in other careers because, oh, and I will, I will show you a video what I think about that. I want you to think of that first question. Gabby, keep that one. And then the second one is, what do you think it takes for women to be successful in network marketing? Okay, we'll go to the other two in a minute. Gabby, let's start. I'll ask you first. Why do you think women can be more successful in uh, in this type of business in a network marketing industry? Well, first of all, we're more social. It's it's more acceptable for me to say, oh my gosh, what perfume are you wearing? You know, going up to a, a woman. And as a matter of fact, I did that the other day. I'm like, oh my gosh, your perfume is really, it smells amazing on you. What is it? And the lady told me what it was. And um, but if a man does it, they feel like you're hitting on them. I mean, I find it that way. Like, oh gosh, you know, don't go there. <laughs> but, oh, oh, somebody's sharing their screen. Sorry, one we're second. more social. We are more um, open to, um, um, like, with my when my kids went to uh, when they were little and they played sports. Um, you're you're more apt to volunteer. Uh, we're more, um, you know, we're just so much more easier to mother, you know, or very, um, we see things, um, we see people's needs, I guess, you know, in, in many ways, like, um, especially when you're trying to build a business, you know, you think, oh my gosh, you know, what can I do to probably talk about my products? Well, then you go, you know, maybe I can ask, um, whatever organization you're with, let, like in my case, church, maybe I can ask one of my church leaders, hey, can I do a segment on facials or skincare or something? You know, we're just more open to do things that we can share our products through. Um, even when we go get facials, you know, take your aqua products and say, can you please use my aquas, um, my um, Glacier Glow and my... Um, my mask after my treatment because it's you know this is with this is what I love this is what and people are going to ask you what is this especially well at the spa you know they're going to ask you what is this and and obviously you know that's when we tell them so we're more apt to sharing and uh, or we just I think a man is not going to do that as easy I know Dave wouldn't. <laughs> yes, I'm glad he didn't. Uh, Mati, Mati, you have the you have the hand up. Let's talk. Let's yeah. listen from Mati. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Sorry, <laughs> it's one, one almost two p.m. here in Canada. And uh, the thing is, um, yeah, we're more social and social person, but uh, uh, we are um, we can share. For example, in my premenopause or menopause group on Facebook. We can share our in, on Instagram in general uh, more our uh, personal uh, emotions. So, yeah, uh, the same thing is like uh, we're having a uh, suffering or how you say going through in life. And uh, for me, it's easier uh, with the ladies. I'm married also. We know, uh, I have a bad experience in, on, online with men. 
because they're all normally looking for something else. <laughs> Sorry for the men here, but I feel like, uh, yeah. And I want to help them, the ladies, after 35, 40 years old. And uh, the other thing that you said, uh, um, Claudia, is um, why? Mm -hmm. So the first question was, why do you think women are more successful or could be more successful in a network marketing industry than in another career? And the other one is, what do you think it takes to be successful for a woman in network marketing? Okay, uh, we can be more successful because of the, um, what a mother, like uh, uh, Gabriela said, and uh, what a mom and a wife, we work with, with what multitasking, we do everything. <laughs> I think uh, we have that um, virtue, virtue, I'm not, I'm not sure if the, the, word, uh, the word in English, virtue, and, uh, yeah, sure. virtue? Okay. and uh, also, I think uh, we need to get more confidence. That's my case. I'm, I'm working on that every day, my personal growth. And um, since I started four years ago in for, in, with For Life, I am uh, changing my life for good. I'm feeling motivated, happy. Even my mom said, everyone, wow, you're super happy. It's not all about money. It's about the, I found something. Uh, I found my motivation in life. My, uh, I, I, like, like, that's something I always wanted, and uh, I, that's why um, I'm getting confidence and I'm, I'm feeling better and loving myself every day more and working uh, different things and uh, personal growth with uh, books and everything and courses. And uh, yeah, that's why. <laughs> I'm not sure if you can answer that with that. That's very good. Actually, you did a lot more than I, I, I expected, so it's great because she hit on many of the values that because the talk is about valuing yourself, she actually said, I'm working on becoming more courageous and more, but she said, but I'm confident and I'm having fun. And that is exactly what happens that, you know, a lot of men just go to work and they don't really have fun at work. They just work because they need to provide, you know, like they went out and they got the hunting deer, you know, when they were doing that, their goal was, I got to get food home. So nowadays for men is very similar. It's like they got, they're built that way genetically. They have to bring the deer home. <laughs> and for us, um, we are more, more social. We are definitely, you know, into um, sharing and networking with other women something that we like and they just they, they don't share they're just like you know I gotta work and I gotta bring what I need to bring home so I'm gonna try and see if I can share this with you and say try because my mouse is a little funny but um, okay so a couple of years ago uh, I oh I need to do sound one second please where's that mouse again I might not be able to share it if I continue to have issues. Uh, oh, there's my little hand. Oh, no. <coughs> One second. Oh, no, no. Michael, can you stop my screen share? It's just that I'm having a lot of issues. Can you stop my screen share? Can force, force shot the screen share? Oh, yeah. Hey there, it's Dallas, and uh, we're gonna have a family. Michael, show. can you? For, oh, I don't know if Michael's there. There's a lot to discuss. Um, like Bansy's another co-host. Bansy, can you stop my screen share? Honest with you at all times, sharing. Oh, let me see. Good or bad. One second. And okay, no, I got it. Help. Is reflected in the title of this video. I just need I to stop that video in the back. Okay, I wasn't able to share, but I'll tell you the story. I'll tell you the story of this woman. And I wanted to show one of Gabby, but what I'll do is I'll share it in the chat. I have two videos, one of Gabby. Uh, it's one of my favorites. It's like a two minute clip or I'll do it from the phone in a minute at the end. There. Okay. So. Um, I didn't see you now. Oh, I can. Oh, yeah. Okay. So let me tell you the story. And I just wanted to actually show Gabby and show the other lady. And because I have them both on my channel. And it was like an idea that I had at that time. And it was called Why Not You? And I love it because Gabby is doing a short clip that she did at convention. So I'm going to put that or I'll show it from my phone in a minute. And Gabby in three minutes is able to empower this room of women with just like a very short speech. At that time, Gabby was not doing an actual speech. She always just introduces Dave. And then she has like a minute or two because they have very limited time to actually 
give her message in a very short way. So Gabby needs to have like one, two or three minutes, learn, learn no more than that, to give a lot of empowerment in such a short period of time so that she can introduce Dave and then Dave can be the, 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 the speaker, right? And so I have one of my favorite clips of Gabby, just very nice. <laughs> and why I chose it is because I believe that the strength in network marketing is the strength that you have to be able to empower a large group of people with your voice. So for me, it was Gabby when she comes every single time and she does what she does and, and Dave, right? But what I mean is we're talking about women and she's able to impact a room of women. And I have to show you the video because you won't understand it unless you see her because she was doing a woman's clip that moment. I don't so know. I'll show I you know. that. I'll show you that. She doesn't know which one I'm going to show, but she'll remember. And the second one I have to show you is it. And Ivelisse, I haven't missed your hand. It's just that I wanted to make sure I got these two videos done. And then I'm going to give the word to Ivelisse. Uh, the other clip is of a woman I actually met in a cruise. <laughs> and this woman, I didn't know. She started talking to me. And I, I was like, wow, this woman's fantastic. And she was telling me, she didn't, she didn't tell me that. I actually found out that she was in a Fortune magazine and she was one of the three most powerful women in, in Germany. <laughs> she, did, she was very humble. She didn't tell me that when I met her. But what she was saying was a couple of things that I want to point out. She was very powerful. And the one thing she told me in secret, meaning in a, in a, in a short, you know, conversation and out of the you know, job environment is that she had to give up everything to get to where she got. So she was at the top of the top in career for women. And she said, Germany is a very difficult country for a woman. So I thought, oh my goodness, if Germany is difficult, every country is difficult, right? Every country is difficult for um, being the top in your, in your world. So this woman said, it cost me everything. This is the way she told me. It cost me everything because my husband was the one that had to raise my kids. I had to fight to get respect. I had to work longer hours than men. I had to do everything to be able to finally reach where I am. And I did it for one thing. I did it so that other women would have the, the way to, to do that this easier like I actually not only gave up my family for all of this I never saw my kids you know being raised I never got home on time I, I missed every everything I missed everything she said and I asked her was it worth it and she said it was worth it because I want other women to not have to go through what I went to it was incredible. And she gives me her number. And then I find out that she's in Fortune magazine and she's like even more important than she ever even told me. And I was like, oh my God, I feel like incredible that I got this. But she does give us a message in that video. So I'm going to look it up while Ivelisse talks and I'm going to look up Gabby's clip. And I want you to compare both clips. And I want you to ask yourself, which woman would you want to be? Would you want to be Gary empowering hundreds and thousands of women with one speech in three minutes? Or do you want to be um, Regine who had to give up her whole... Uh, the one thing she told me also is that her husband had passed away and that she had quit her job <laughs> because she had quit her job because she wanted to take care of the husband and they did not allow her. She couldn't really do that. So she had actually quit everything she had done to take care of the husband who was dying. The husband had passed away and now she was coming back to take, you know, back her incredible positioning, you know, in whatever company she was. So so I'm going to show you both clips, but I'm going to leave Ivelisse. I'm going to let Gabby talk and I'm going to find both clips to close with that. Ivelisse, you still want to talk? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. It's just sharing. It's just share. sharing the... Uh, about when you ask about uh, why we are more and have a tendency to be working in network marketing and what we need to take to to like to grow in that area like being in the network marketing. First of all, it's because of flexibility. For us, working in network marketing is flexible too because usually we are the one who carry for the family and whatever we decided to do, we they had to do it with them, with the children in hands, where the house had to be set, everything had to be done. And in the meantime, we had to 
do something to to manage our own fin finances, you know, or, or participate or support our family too. And I think this is the main um, factor to be in network marketing for women. Mm -hmm. Because right away we see the flexibility. I say, oh, I can do that. I can talk because we talk, we talk each other. We are not shy in that part. And when we find other to be shy, uh, we usually, um um like encourage them we are good in accordance uh each other you know women are good in that and support each other and i think this is making more easy for us to see our pathway in the world marketing i think including myself that will make it to get in the world marketing uh grow for us like it grow in that area uh oh um finances uh talking like it's when we believe that it's possible that we don't have to do it no more like door to door from part to part when you just call your friend and say like oh i have something like a secret you don't have to do it no more as a secret because you can be professional you can have that kind of money you can earn and you can learn to manage and provide for your family. You can make that dream for them. We are so used to be the men, to see the men create and make possible those dreams, that houses, that, you know, the money. We see only the men in that picture. We are so used to that. And when we believe that it's possible for us to stand up, as a wonder woman and say, I can do that. I can have that suit. I can have that car. I can provide a house. I can see my family in that vacation. I can see that account in my name. That's when we really put ourselves out and do whatever it takes. Or when you see yourself, they, they usually they let you because you are so detracted. They call it detraction when we start working hard in our um, side hustle, like we call in them, but it's network marketing. When we start working hard, then they call in distraction. And then you maybe lose your you marriage. You maybe have to work harder to, pro, to prove it that you can do this. And when you see that challenge, this is another way that you can to take that decision a little more clear for yourself. Are you gonna do it or no? So uh, this is my point of view. I being in those shoes and uh, yeah, family is always uh, the best or the more important thing for women. And when we have children and family to take care of, doesn't matter as a brother or sister, you have to take care of your mother. When you have that power behind you, when you have that position that you have to do it, and when women go in network marketing, we all have that story. We all have a challenge. So that's my sharing for you guys. Cigarettes to go. But then I started losing my Lavi, I can't hear you. Even Lee shared her testimonial last e month on the other group, the evening group. So I'm going to have her actually share her testimonial uh, soon so that you guys here in this, in this, um, in this mentor Monday, so that you can, you can understand where she's coming from with what she's saying, because the day she shared her testimonial, almost no one knew it. And pretty much everybody in the room cried because she, it was such a powerful testimonial. So I found um, a way here faster to share with you this clip. And I'm going to probably share um, Gabby's first. Oh, Dr. Georgina's trying to come in. Okay. Phone is so much easier. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Oh, I need sound on this one. One second. Sorry. I need to.
Can't hear you. Mm -hmm. Test. Can't hear you now. Single mothers with children, please stand up. Mm -hmm. I want to give you all a hand. <laughs> I want to take the time to thank David and Bianca, Liz and me, because without their vision, from the time we first went to go see them in 1998, we wouldn't have had this opportunity when it was presented to Dave and we talked about flying to Utah. I had no hesitation because he was so optimistic and that's one thing I loved about him. After everything he'd been through in the past, he was so optimistic and so ready to take on the world. And when this opportunity came to us, we didn't hesitate because of the involvement that we were going to be part of for life. Our lives have changed. If you would have told me when I was working at Walmart that I would be traveling the world and meeting people that have become part of my family, I wouldn't have believed you. I wouldn't have believed that in a million years that it has become a reality. And I'm very blessed to know every single one of you. Thank you so much for making, making my life so much better with, with, your, with your friendship. And you know, many of you I have been able to talk to and we've shared stories, but there's so many of you I haven't met yet and I'm eager to know. We all have a story. We all begin from a beginning. And maybe someday I will hear your story and you will inspire us. We have five children together. Two of them have been born during the time we've been in four life. And I could stand here and tell you so many great stories about the products and the testimonies I have. But you all know because you have your own testimonies. Again, with David and Bianca Lizenby and Steve too, we have a wonderful company that supports us in every way. And we have you. And we're very, very, very blessed. <laughs> because he also gave us this opportunity by bringing it to us. I want to thank you all and um, <laughs> I want to end by saying that we love you and we look forward to seeing you in future events in your country. Thank you. <laughs> now oh I'm going to show... <laughs> Did you, do you remember that, Gabby? That was back before I prepared myself <laughs> oh I, I know and that was one of the um can you hear me yes right yeah. uh -huh. okay um that was one of the things that I actually wanted to point out that this was very long ago this was like 10 years ago and Gabby is another Gabby today Gabby is an incredible speaker she is delivering her own message at that time I remember I think this convention and a couple more I saw her she would always get nervous and do that giggle that I could see she was nervous and she it's almost like you could see her talking in front of 8,000 people, but she was nervous. And now she's grown so much as uh, that network marketer leader and woman that she is in these past four or five years. She's grown more than ever, delivering her own message and not just the message of Dave and Gabby or just the message of I'm going to introduce to you my husband. And so it was really nice because the two things I love about that video was that you recognize the moms. You said moms and and uh, single moms, 
stand up and then ah, oh, they're all clapping and that's why the person that is recording points out to the moms that are uh so that was beautiful for me because I was a single mom so I oh, every time I cried um but the other thing was you're always acknowledging um God you're always acknowledging you know you're humble you're saying many of you I know and many of you I don't and so there's just so many good things on that little clip where you're not even the speaker <laughs> you're just introducing Dave and so I can't wait to see Gavi as the main speaker at one of our conventions now to finish and I know we're over our time I'm sorry it's because I had so many issues with my mouse I'm going to show you now the mm. clip of the other woman just because it's going to also help it's three minutes and then we're going to close with the last question I'm going to go back here uh share I love that video, Gabby, even though it's like 10 years old and uh, it just reminds me of that old Gabby and how much you have grown in this industry as a network marketer. Oh. By the way, did you all know that the largest income earner of this industry is a woman? She passed away this year and she was uh, Jesse Lee and she passed away. She was under 40. She, I think she was like 32 years or 36 years, very young woman. And she was the top earner of any man and woman in the network marketing industry. Okay. And, and Gabby and I would, would do these little clips. I, I have to do more of her when I, when I start working with her. But here is the other lady. And I'll put the, the clip on our chats after. Sientes que no puedes salir del pozo donde that. estás. Y que por más que te esfuerces trabajando, no ves que bad. Hi everybody, this is Regine and Regine is from Germany. This is uh, such an amazing opportunity to create a video on the Why Not You series because this woman has been telling me about how inspiring she has been through her career and her family life, adopting a beautiful uh, son. And I just want to ask her a few questions. Regine, what is the best advice you can give a woman when um, we're starting a new business or a new project? I think the most important thing is like for all projects to have a clear plan and for the females especially to have to never give up um, if problems occur that's normal that they have the self-confidence and belief in what they really want and when we do find that challenge how do we find somebody where to turn to somebody who would give us an advice or I think so many are around um, during my career and I was the only woman wherever I did show up on the management levels because Germany is lagging behind here. I was just approaching managers and I said, would you be ready to be my mentor? And they were all happy. Nobody said, it's not my, my thing. I have no time for that. Everybody felt uh, good and said, it's good that somebody wanted advice. So don't um, wait and just look for the right people where you feel they can give you at that moment in time um, a little bit of a feedback, a mirror, um, and telling you how they see your approach. Wonderful. Now, you have told me about really great accomplishments you did in your career uh, life. What would you say was one of the greatest and proudest moments of your career? Oh, there had been so many. Um, if I look, um, I think the, the best moments had been in my private life. Okay, and I, tell always, us about I that. always made sure. Yeah, when I think it, it was really, um, uh, we were really lucky when we got, when I was 50 years and I got a second son from Eritrea and it was from both sides. I always uh, tell the people and say, he, he trained us. Uh, we trained him to be German a little bit, very accurate, uh, keep uh, meetings, be in time, tell us if he's not uh, coming back um, as we agreed upon. Uh, and on the other hand, he trained us a lot on to relax a little bit, to lay back and say, okay, <laughs> it must not be all be a German perfection everywhere. Absolutely. Okay, one one other question. And uh, uh, one of the things that really amazed me was that she's traveling, I guess, pretty much the world on her own now. She's doing just two trips a year, but uh, she was on an amazing trip already. Now we're here in Alaska. And so how does a woman get this power to not be afraid to travel alone and to be able and, and you were already a strong person in, in your business life, but where do you get the strength to not be afraid to um, do things that other people would just be panic about? I think it was um, a famous writer who did say once, you only regret things you hadn't done. You never regret something when there a little problem occurs. The only thing is that you look back and say, I would have had a chance to see a lot, to do a lot, and I just missed it because I was afraid. 
So sometimes um, I'm really afraid right the day before I start my traveling. I think well, had, um, was it crazy to do that? And then you manage it all. You just have to go for it. Oh, Regine, thank you. So ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching this, remember that this, uh, this series of videos I'm calling Why Not You? Because we are all capable of doing anything and everything that we have set our minds to but we have to set our minds to it so stop dreaming and start doing and uh, travel around the world if that's your dream thank you all right can i show you something that kind of mess okay um let me stop that share what do you think about that gabby well you know Everyone, every mentor, whether man or woman, has something to share and something to ponder on, you know, something to, you know, if you want to change your life, you do need a mentor. You know, you need that daily motivation. You you do. You do. Just like we need water, we need air, you know, um, and, yeah. you know, I think all of us. If, if we do something consistently, we get, I know we get good at it. Um, we just have to find what we want to do, how we want to do it. Um, you know, I mean, I can make the best cookies in the world, but if I don't have people trying them or eating them, then, you know, I'm not going to have success because I'm keeping them to myself. And I'm I'm kind of saying that we have the best products in the world. And it's our job as affiliates to go out there and tell people about it, you know? And and a lot of times we need to, like in this instance, I'm I'm looking at our probiotics, you know. What are the main features? At least work on that. Work on memorizing what the main features are. You know, it promotes the growth of beneficial friendly bacteria. Five forms of different bacteria, you know? I mean, if you, with that bullet point alone, just also, it doesn't require refrigeration and it tastes amazing, you know? People are, I mean, I've tasted other other probiotics and they're not that good. <laughs> I mean, um, and ours is amazing. It's life-changing actually. So, I mean, if you just approach somebody with that, you know, belief, then they're more open to try it. So, yeah, I, I, it was very, very nice. The the presentation, that little, that little, what is it, two minute conversation you had with this amazing Fortune five hundred person, you know, um, and she was so humble too. She was she so was, humble. She was. She was. Then, <laughs> then when I read the story, I actually clipped it into the chat. If you guys want to read it. Because, again, she did tell me, uh, but I just didn't understand until I got home and read, oh, my gosh, I was, like, talking to this woman that when you read the article, you see it, how humble she is. So um, my point is she was amazing. We kept uh, writing for a few years. I haven't written her in a long time. Maybe I should write her and see. But the point was that she was uh, traveling the world, and she wanted to travel the world because she said, uh, she had missed so much while she had her husband alive and now she had to travel alone. So those are the things she actually didn't say in the video because it was a, a motivational video, right? Uh, so I, wanted, I want to finish with what she said, which is you only regret the things that you haven't done. So Women of For Life, the last two questions were, why do you think personally you have not been able to achieve your goals in network marketing yet? I want you to ask yourself then. And the last one is, would you be able to achieve your financial goals with the job or the career that you have today? And again, first you have to know what your financial goals are, which is where we started and not just um, do it because you want to do it. Then that's when people say, oh, you're in a cult, <laughs> you know, network marketing, and they don't respect you in your career. They don't respect you in your network marketing business. Yesterday, I had the blessing to be able to talk to Dave while he was at the dog park. I was with my new leaders. 
And I felt so proud that they were there because they are business people. Both of them. She's the owner of a salon. A salon. She is, a, you know, he's a lawyer. And I was, I wanted to reach that moment where I could tell them, I am a network marketer. This is my career. And I want you to talk to my leaders, Dave and Gabby. And this is our career. <laughs> I, I want people to recognize this is my career, respected as if I was a lawyer or a business owner of a great salon like my new leader. And they did. And I, I was just so proud and said, my gosh, I've reached a moment where I can talk to lawyers and I feel that I don't need a degree of law or doctor or dentist or anything because I already had one of those and never used it. It's it's like rolled up on somewhere under my bed. I I I not nothing against it. My dad paid a lot for that university degree. But it's now that I'm in the happiest moment of my life. So with that, Gabby, um are you in the happiest moment of your life or do you have more dreams? And this is where we actually talked about our fighting like do you want more? Like, can you get more out of network marketing? Of course, <clears throat> there's always room for improvement. But my goals are helping every one of you achieve your goals. And obviously, gosh, I, as much as I would love to do it for you individually, obviously, there's no way I can do that. <laughs> but, you know, through these Zoom calls, you know, there's a calendar on um uplinepro.com that gives you three options of different languages in Portuguese, Spanish, and English. If you look um if you look up at the calendar to see what times uh, Zoom calls are being presented every single day, then tune in. Tune into a Zoom call. Um, if you have let's say someone that is interested, you know, invite them on the Zoom call. Um, you know, there's so many ways of building your business. And uh, we have every every single one of us does it differently. There is no, how can I say? There's no, like, you have to do it the way I do it type thing, you know? Um, Claudia builds different than me and Dave do, builds different than me. So, you know, it's not a one size fits all. But one thing's for sure, you have to be consistent. You have to do it daily. And learn learn why okay i love like i said i love our probiotics but if i'm going to talk to somebody why do i love them they're going to start asking me well how many strains of bacteria does it have um why do you like it what has it done for you and you're going to be like um if you don't know <laughs> if you don't know the bullet points then you're going to get stuck and that's the thing. That's why you probably don't feel confident. You have to gain that confidence by learning a little bit about your product and um, why it's the best and why you represent this company. Exactly, Gabby. That was it. That That is the center of it all. Value yourself is about respecting your network marketing business the way that you want others to respect your network marketing business. If you have no respect for your network marketing business by training yourself, reading, growing, reading the books, not only uh, about what for life is, but uh, personal growth, then people will not value you and respect you the way that you want to. And then you're like, oh, why is no one listening to me? Oh, why does anybody say yes? They all say no. They do not see you yet with the respect that you deserve because that, that that respect, you have to earn it and you earn it yourself, building yourself. Like Gabby says, Dave's number one rule, learn a product a day, read about a product a day. And Dr. Gina, who is here, how many times he says, read a book every week or every month. Dr. Gina reads like a book, a book a week or something like that. I think he reads like, I don't know how many books, but he posts them all the time. So are you reading books? Are you building yourself as a network marketer? Woman, there is so much for you to do in this business. But the one thing that I know, because I have had this repeat in my life many times, I have taken the most, most shy, the shyest, the shyest people from not talking to top levels, not, not yet in this company, but in the other one. And uh, I'm going to see... Uh, I'm going to close with that story. Um, uh, I'm going to hopefully see a lady uh, on the 31st, if everything goes well. 
And uh, she was one of the shyest people I've met. I've had so many shy people and shy stories. And I was able to build her to be the number two leader in, in uh, the other company. And it was all through just hard work, believing herself, knowing that she could talk to anybody. And her husband saw value in what she was doing, supported her. Because the first thing you need to re gain respect in is your family. <clears throat> if your family sees that you're serious in this business, then your friends will see you serious in this business. And then your community will see you serious. And then everyone, and then you will be able to attract those people. So uh, don't, don't, if, if you are just, going into a lot of Zooms and not getting the numbers or getting the results and the check is not growing. I told the other lady in this in this group uh, last week, I said, she said, my husband doesn't let me go to convention. <laughs> and I said, he doesn't respect uh, your, your business yet. And it doesn't mean that it's because just the check that you're bringing. You need to tell him, this is valuable to me as a woman because this is where I grow. You spend money on other hobbies. This is part of my social growth. This is the part of my personal growth, I learn with my people. And, uh, and so you need to earn that respect. And it doesn't have to be with a check that you bring home, you build the respect of your network marketing industry and your family with your children and your, and your um, husband or wife, husband in, case, in this case, by showing you yourself respect for what you're doing every day. So with that, we're going to open. Anybody, any comments? We're closing today. Thank you very much for being here. Anybody wants to finish any comments? Any comments? Just mention tonight's call that we have with them. Um, yes. So uh, for North America or those uh, pe the people in Africa that wake up early, like Margaret sometimes shows up. I don't know if, if Margaret's still here. Uh, we have Girl Talk, and Girl Talk is our Monday talk. It's actually called Girl Talk Real Talk because now we're getting a lot of men <laughs> and also to be our speakers. Girl Talk and Real Talk is our um, our talk where we talk about different topics and why it's becoming very popular because we don't just talk about for life and we don't just talk about health. We talk about everything that is health and wellness related. So it is a good venue to bring people that are going to be aligning with your vision and when you align people to the vision of health and wellness you're able to funnel who is interested if you invite 20 or 30 people to this talk and you get three trust me those three are going to listen to the talk on wednesday which is health oriented or dr gina's talk tomorrow health oriented and you're also going to be able to bring them into a business opportunity. So it's a funnel. It's a funnel. We call it funnels, which is what people are attracted to what you are attracted. Gabby and Dr. Rani do a great job every night. Uh, sorry, every Monday night. And so bring your people. It's, you know, they're working hard to get, like I said, it's a funnel. You see who's interested in what you're doing. We don't talk about insurance. We don't talk about travel packages, <laughs> you know. We, we don't, we talk about, and, and the insurance example is last, not last week, we had an insurance person talking about how important wealth and organization and discipline are in your life. So you see, so we're not trying to get people to buy insurance from us, but we're trying to get who is aligned with wellness in all the aspects of your life. So don't uh, miss tonight with, uh, she, she wrote a book, uh, Lena, and I'm just going to invite you. Let me just uh, go to this. I just want to get her last name properly. Lane, doctor, oh, she's a doctor. Dr. Lena Wins Croggins. Um, everybody's invited. And Lena uh, is... Um, let me read this. Lena woke up one day to the harsh reality of homelessness at 51, uncertain about her future. And with less than 100, she set out to a daunting journey, determined to navigate alone for the first time. Despite facing numerous obstacles, her flicker of hope guided her through, leading her to discover a new purpose. She shares her inspiring journey, emphasizing the power of faith, perseverance, an unwavering belief in God's presence, and even in the darkness, darkest moments, finding a glimmer of hope. Um, Lena already joined our For Life um, uh, team by becoming a customer. So it's great not only to support the talk, but to support those that are joining our For Life lines that can bring a message to the world. So 
Thank you, everybody. I'm going to unmute all of you so you can say hi to Gabby and say hi to me and say hi to each other. And remember, how many days until convention? Gabby, how many more days until convention? I Gosh. lost my count. 23. Like, like less, like 33, 33, less than a month, less than a month. So everybody, I see you at convention. Thank you. you thank Utah. you for everything, thank people. You. Thank you. Excellent. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much, ladies. Good night. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you ladies. Thank you, everybody. It's thank you much. Thank you. Thank you, Gabriela. Thank you, Claudia. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you, Ingrid, for participating. Thank, Thank you, amazing Thank you. ladies. Bye. Bye-bye, everybody. Happy bye, International bye. Women's Month. We celebrate the whole month and the whole year. It's good to be a woman. <laughs> Banshee, good to see you. Thank you for your help. Yeah. <laughs> That, thank bye, you, everyone. Tina, for sending me the talks. Thank bye, you, Mati Gomez. Bye-bye. Jesse, good to see you here, too. Marco, Margaret, Susan, all that. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. -bye, everybody. bye.